Hello, uh, welcome. This is Sachin again. And uh, today we will be discussing about uh, using the Kafka producer API and how to produce a generic uh, POJO, let's say, uh, generic Java object into uh, Kafka brokers. So um, this will be last um, uh, in its series uh, for the producer APIs before I start consumer in the next video onwards. I thought it's important to cover um, how to push um, generic Java object into um, the Kafka stream. All right, so let's get it started. Uh, let me share my screen real quick. All right, okay. So um, before we start, um, this is, um, I mean, in this video also, I will share all these links, but if you have not gone to my previous videos, please follow uh, the links, um, um, basically how to run your um, various uh, infrastructure components like Redis, Postgres, Nginx, and definitely Kafka, which is important for the series, and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, Kafka project is like what uh, I have been using for uh, this particular series. Okay, so let's get started. So in the previous uh, Kafka producer APIs, we saw the very basic use case where um, you can push a message of key type as a string and value type as also a string. It's like super simple, uh, we did that. And um, uh, we also covered that how you can use uh, confluent schema registry everything do it yourself kind of thing. You can just pretty much follow the video and try everything right away at your system. Um, and yeah, we also saw that how you can use confluent schema registry and how you can create these um, um, Avro files and basically uh, using a Maven plugin, um, you can generate the Avro object and then definitely you can use a schema registry to push that object into Kafka stream. So let's quickly, uh, recap that part. All right, so this is the Kafka template we have used in previous session. And um, basically, this is pretty much the configuration where you just set up the brokers and uh, pretty much the key and value uh, serializer, which is Kafka Avro serializer, and the schema registry. So far, so good. But sometimes, um, sometimes for whatever be the reason, this works best. It uh, manage your schema into a central place. Um, you can put some kind of a rule uh, for backward compatibility, forward compatibility, and everything is covered in the previous please uh, to see that. But for whatever reason, if you don't want to use schema registry and you want to just push a Java generic object into uh, Kafka stream without going through uh, resting into a schema URL, though I highly encourage it because that way you can better control your schema. All right, so uh, my intention is to basically, so I just created a contact object, which is super simple, just ID and name, the POJO plain old Java object. And I want to push this object uh, instance into Kafka stream. So problem is very clear, very simple. So if you recall from our previous sessions, what producer API does, just give a quick recap. The first thing, it serializes your object. The second thing, it identifies your topic partition. Third thing, it pushes your serialized, which is like a byte array information into batches. So that's producer API, one thread does that job. Another thread actually once this batch is full or linger, time has reached whatever reaches earlier, uh, it pushes that into Kafka. All right, so basically pretty much uh, we can, the takeaway is, to push any object, you need a Kafka serializer from the producer side. And similarly, from the consumer side, you, um, you need deserializer. So uh, if I want to push, a, let's say, contact object, I need to write a specific code to write some kind of a serialization logic, uh, something like a contact serializer, um, uh, which we can use our producer API to push this object. But the idea is like uh, in a large project that will be like kind of an impossible to write a various serializer and deserializer for each and every object. So I think the best practice which usually I follow is to create some kind of a Kafka message 
So basically every time you are just going to send a Kafka message, which is of a generic type. So that's what like it is uh, denoted as anchors and then T. And it is like super simple fields uh, based on your requirement, you can put your fields, but for demo purpose, this works fine. Uh, just generate a unique identifier so you can produce it and when you consume, you can match those IDs, okay? And the data, the most important. So when you um, instantiate this Kafka object, you encapsulate what data you want to push into, um, uh, into this object, right? And definitely uh, from the type of data, it gets a class and says and convert into canonical name. So the data type is basically a string which defines what is your object. So for example, if I might, my intent is to use a contact object, the value will become such in work Kafka contact. All right. So now uh, you can create your contact object, customer object, and so on and so forth. But there will be one uh, Kafka message in the whole project. And then definitely one serializer and one deserializer, very generic. So this implementation is also super simple. Um, so to serialize any message uh, into the Kafka, you need to implement the serializer interface uh, provided by Apache Kafka commons. And uh, which is of type because I am planning to push a message of type Kafka message, which in itself is a generic type. So that's what I have given over here. The moment you give it, you need to um, overwrite these two methods. So pretty much this method is being used for our use case here. So once you have an object and you just want to convert it into a byte array and JSON uh, from the Google library works best for JSON operation to convert to and fro the Java object into the string and vice versa. So that's what I pretty much use that. Uh, any kind of, I mean, Kafka message of any type which is here in the data, and you just convert it into a JSON, and then the guy get byte array. And this is also the same thing, just a reverse, you get the data, use the same JSON, convert from JSON, and typecast into a Kafka message. So that's it. Uh, I think all our setup is done. Let's quickly see the config part. So config is also going to be super simple, pretty much what we already have, but because uh, this time we are going to push a Kafka message object, which is a generic type. Um, that's what the return type of your uh, producer uh, factory object will be. And uh, the key CLI that I have just kept its string for keeping it simple, but to demonstrate that we can push any kind of an object, uh, this will be a Kafka message serializer, which we just saw. And that's it pretty much. So once you have this, uh, producer factory, uh, it's just a matter of instantiating your Kafka template by providing that method. And then you get a Kafka template uh, with this qualifier name, which is of generic type. Now, once you have it, uh, pretty much it's a time to see the test cases. So here you go, simple producer, and that's it, here you go. So um, what here I'm gonna do is to just instantiate a dummy contact object and I have uh, created a new Kafka message. And basically just for brevity, I have uh, just included one constructor. You just pass the data and this object will be instantiated. Basically it will populate this data. And from the class type, it will enter what is data type and UID is generated at the instance creation time. So that's it. The code is super simple. And it's just a matter of um, pushing that Kafka message, and I'm using UUID as a key into the topic. That's it, this all code is like from the previous sessions. If you have followed, this is like super simple. All right, okay, so let's get it started. Uh, those who have followed my previous uh, sessions, they are already aware how simple it is to start a Kafka three node cluster. And uh, just check out, um, this repository and just run a script over here. That's it. If you have a Mac system, this will be run super simple. If in case of Linux or Windows, it may give some problems, which I'm gonna provide support in future, but if you follow the script, that will be straightforward. And the only one thing I do is put in a loop my Docker PSA command so that I know how many containers uh, are currently running. So we see like past 17 seconds, 21 seconds, these four containers are up. 
All right, so one good thing about these scripts, which I've also discussed in detail in my previous sessions, is uh, it also spit out the information, which is very handy for you. So in my case, uh, I am pushing this message into my topic, uh, which is, I mean, my topic. All right, so, and I just want to read that. So basically it's, I just put that my topic, and here is a consumer command. And basically this should be sufficient for me. All right, I did exit IT and I went inside the container and I'm executing my consumer script, connecting with the Kafka, the topic I've already defined over here. And I want to explicitly print the keys with the separate as a colon, right? Let me clear my screen. All right, now it's just a matter of running that project. And let me quickly run it. Okay, where is my test case? Simple producer, okay. That's on that. So in the meantime, it runs. Let's separate it out. Okay, so this test is run. This is in the green, and we see a message has come over here. And uh, now you can see that this is the key you already generated, and this is the whole Kafka message, which has three parts. One is as UUID, so that you consume, you can match that way, and this is your actual data which you are pushing it so i mean from class per side it's like totally immaterial what kind of a class or whatever end of the day it's just a byte array uh, but you also put a data type like what is the type of a class which will help you at the consumer side when you consume that message you want to deserialize it and, and you want to know that okay what kind of a message let's say in this topic you are uh, pushing various different kind of a message uh, for whatever be the reason but on the consumer side you can read that information and using this information which is injected in the message you can get to know that what is a class type which you need to deserialize that so that's pretty much guys for um, today's session I, I, I think I am uh, kind of done with the producer and uh, in the next few sessions I will be covering consumer which is not uh, which will not be taking so many sessions like straightforward simple consumers in some of the um, properties I'm going to explain and if time permits, I will also prepare some videos on the case stream and quickly show you that how Kafka streams, I mean, how powerful they are, uh, where you can read data from one topic and at the real runtime, real real time, you can push the analytics information, the, the aggregated information, the summarized information into a separate topic. All right, guys, let's, let's meet into, let's meet next time. Thank you. Right.